Bollywood is dragged into the war over Kashmir. Pakistani actors are banned from working in India. And cinemas in Pakistan boycott Indian films. What does the clash over culture mean for the long-running conflict? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Hazm Seeker. A fighting in Kashmir between Indian and Pakistani troops has become a cultural war too now. Indian films made in Bollywood are being boycotted by major cinemas in Pakistan. That came after Pakistani actors were banned from working in India. A group of Indian film producers say they are showing solidarity with troops fighting in Kashmir. So film fans are polarized and movie budgets hit, while in the disputed region, the United Nations is calling for calm. Renewed fighting is forcing thousands of villagers from their homes. Victoria Gatenby reports. Villagers near the line of control in Indian-administered Kashmir feel frightened and vulnerable. We made trenches in the 90s, but they were destroyed by earthquakes and floods. Unlike the army, we have no trenches to protect our women and children. All around us there is devastation. If there is a war, it will be the ordinary people who suffer the most. Kashmir has been divided between India and Pakistan since 1947. These latest troubles threaten a ceasefire agreed 13 years ago. We don't want war because nothing good will come of it. People from that side of Kashmir and this side of Kashmir will die. That's why they should sit and talk. Only dialogue will resolve this issue. While both sides blame each other for the fighting, people living in Pakistan-administered Kashmir say their lives have also been turned upside down. We could not send our children to school when there's tension between the two countries like the recent border firing by Indian troops. There is fear and panic among the people. We're not in a position to move, nor are we thinking of leaving our area. 400 kilometers away from Kashmir is the city of Faisalabad in Pakistan. One of two soldiers killed in cross-border fire on Thursday has been buried. The crowd of mourners chant, long live the Pakistani army. <laughs> Feelings are running high on both sides. The UN says it's working on ways to stop the fighting. The Secretary General urges the government of India and Pakistan to exercise maximum restraint and address the outstanding issues peacefully and through dialogue. Political tensions between India and Pakistan are spilling over into popular culture. In a show of solidarity with their armed forces, some Indian film producers have banned Pakistani actors and singers from working in India. Others, though, disagree with that. These are artists. These are two different subjects. They were terrorists. These are artists. What do you think? Is an artist a terrorist? It's our government who gives them work permits and visas. In Pakistan, Bollywood films are being boycotted by most major cinemas. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. Our music, films and sports have bound the people of India and Pakistan together for decades. But at times of conflict, those ties are split. Bollywood films are India's most important and visible cultural export. Indian films were banned in Pakistan after war broke out in 1965, but smuggled tapes found their way into Pakistani homes. More than 40 years later, Pakistan President Pervez Musharraf lifted the ban when a new peace process began. Indian filmmakers soon found a lucrative market across the border. A reported 70% of films in Pakistan come from either Mumbai or Los Angeles. A boycott of Bollywood films in Pakistan could force some cinemas to close. And in India, it could put several big productions starring high-profile Pakistani actors at risk. Well, let's bring in our panel now from Kolkata via Skype. We're joined by Maidul Islam, who is an assistant professor at Presidency University specializing in cinema and identity politics. From Islamabad, we have Maria Iqbal Tarana, who is a social and political activist. And joining us from New Delhi, Naya Ranan, 
Madhavan, who is a journalist and commentator. Good to have you all uh, with us. So, uh, Maidul Islam, let me start with you. How has this, how did we get to this point? How has this conflict managed to spill over into the cinema world? You see, uh, in the case of the Bollywood cinema, uh, you have a presence of Bombay as a city and where you have also a presence of the Shiv Sena and the MNS, which is a breakaway group of Shiv Sena in Bombay. Now, the cinema industry for the last uh, few decades had to actually deal with Shiv Sena because Shiv Sena is a, is a kind of an important player in Bombay politics also. Now, what is Shiv Sena's history? The Shiv Sena's history has been a very strongly anti-immigrant politics. So it started with the Muslims, the Pakistanis, and then it, it got into this whole anti-Bihari, anti-North Indian kind of a sentiment. Now, I find it deeply disturbing because it completely contradicts with the secular ethos of the Indian constitution and the Indian nation state. Because suppose if we are buying this whole anti-immigrant politics of Shiv Sena, then then tomorrow, Donald Trump might say that, OK, you know, Indians, Bangladeshis, Pakistan is a Chinese. We are you are not welcome in the United States or some kind of an articulation, kind of anti-immigrant political articulation in Europe by the neo-Nazi groups. Now, what would be our position in that kind of a situation? I guess one needs to distinguish between two things. Terrorists are terrorists. They don't have any religion. And today in the world of global terror, they also don't have any nation state. Right. And one has to also make this difference with artists who are talented people. Now, of course, there is also the issue of business. Now, today, in a situation where you have war kind of a situation, we don't need that kind of a war of a situation. I don't think that the common Indian taxpayer and the common Indian tax and the common taxpayer in Pakistan, they are they are willing to support this kind of a war situation. We need to tackle terrorism through the question of dialogue. Now, of course, the Indian India Pakistan problem in the is a problem of seven decades, right? So it's a it's a long political problem, and the dialogue is the only way. Now, if you target some kind of an artist and some kind of uh, talented people like singers or, or 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 actors, then it's a very easy way and it's a very callous approach to address a very serious political question. And I think it's a very easy way of of getting some mileage. Of a political mileage for very na narrow sectarian political interests in a state where you know Shiv Sena is doing its politics. Remember, in the context where the Shiv Sena is no more a major party in Maharashtra, right? So that is one thing. Then there are several elections which is coming up in the Uttar Pradesh where there is a there could be a four conduct fight, and the ruling political party might think that you know to fan up this anti-Pakistani anti and the warlike situation, they are going to try to they are trying to mobilize some kind of a votes for uh, for for this impending elections in Punjab and in Uttar Pradesh. Now, common Indian citizens need, and also the common in, uh, common Pakistani citizens, as taxpayers, we don't need this war. So there has to be some kind of All a right. dialogue. Maria, and and that, that dialogue is the only way to peaceful resolution of a long political question. Maria Iqbal, what's your, uh, Iqbal Tarana, what's your take on this? And how is this being viewed in Pakistan in general? Yeah, uh, being a Kashmiri region, definitely, I never want, um, and not only myself, but my society, my people, never want uh, to live um, uh, 1.5 billion of population of Pakistan in India in a hatred for such a long time. Um, and uh, it's been 70 years. If you look back, not um, my generation, my parents' generation, my grandparents' generation, they were all one. 70 years back, that was a one nation. Uh, they had shared the same language, same culture. And uh, today, um, when we see uh, 2016, where we started this journey in 1947 and 2016, um, my generation feels we are st st still stuck in that era because um, uh, today we must talk about peace, harmony, because uh, Pakistan's and India's total population is 22% of South Asia. And um, uh, no doubt um, uh, we have uh, fought three wars on Kashmir. And uh, today we have taken, uh, we have instigated another issue, which is uh, banning an artist from both sides. Um, India initiated that uh, process uh, of banning um, uh, Pakistani actors from Indian industry. And uh, then uh, because Pakistani government was also pressurized by a common person that what has been happening on their end. So they had to uh, take um, some kind 
kind of a no notice. Um, so um, uh, PAMRA has some issued some uh, notice uh, until 15th of October. All the cable operators have to um, uh, ban uh, Indian channels showing Indian dramas, Indian music, and um, might be uh, Indian in the, uh, showing f f um, uh, Indian films in Pakistan will be banned. Um, so I think um, that's not a good idea because uh, two segments of the society, especially uh, politicians and uh, actors, artists, they have a followers and um, their, um, uh, they, they, uh, followers have a strong attachment with the, uh, uh, their uh, 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 divas, either they are artists, they are singers, they are actors. Um, so um, I think um, uh, that's not a good idea right. um, uh, of um, uh, uh, banning these ambassadors of love because when they cross borders, uh, they carry uh, love, message right. of love, peace, harmony and tolerance to across the border. And right. um, these are the people um, who are our voice. Um, so to, uh, if we ban uh, Indian actors coming here or uh, Pakistani actors right. working there. No. So I think uh, who will play a uh, role of ambassador tomorrow? Narayanan uh, Madhavan, is this, um, I mean, when we see Pakistani actors being banned in, in India, India films being banned in Pakistan, what, whose interests ultimately does this kind of cultural war serve? It's, very, it's a very good question. I think uh, what's, what we see now is a, some sort of a mainstreaming of right-wing uh, uh, sort of uh, lobbies in Bollywood, which has historically been standing up for liberal and secular values. So ever since the arrival of Prime Minister Narendra Modi of the right-wing BJP two years ago, there has been a surge of uh, support for him within Bollywood as well, with some pretty prominent figures standing up. So what we have seen uh, this week is just a culmination of that spirit of uh, right-wing national assertion, which some people call uh, jingoism. Now, uh, I would think it's a bit of a self-goal to ban Pakistani artists because the retaliatory action that we have seen in Islamabad and in the other parts of Pakistan to ban Indian films essentially cuts into the soft power of Indian diplomacy. Bollywood has always uh, succeeded in projecting a wonderful image of India uh, and also helped not just build bridges through art, but also the messages they carry have historically been of friendship. So the last year, the Indian film by, uh, Bajrangi Bhaijan, starring Salman Khan, who, just to, uh, uh, who yesterday stood up in support of Pakistani artists, has been a big hit in Pakistan, which was all about a Hindu a very strong religious Hindu man rescuing a, a Muslim girl from Pakistan and restoring her back to her parents in Pakistan. So this is the kind of movie uh, that set the tone for a friendly atmosphere between India and Pakistan, going beyond the military and the uh, you know elite tensions involving very powerful people so that the ordinary people can connect with each other and understand that across these borders they are regular people just like us. So that kind of feeling is being scaled back by the right the rise of uh, solidarity of uh, uh, strong Bollywood producers with um, a sort of a right-leaning uh, government. Uh, of course there is a point that these producers have that everybody has to stand up against terror but artists are generally uh, people who just carry messages of love and harmony. And the irony is that cross-border trade has been taking uh, place across the LOC line of control in Kashmir, even as we speak. And India has a most favored uh, nation status out for Pakistan in trade. So if trade ties can stay where they are, where is the need to ban artists? So oh. art heals. It doesn't, you know, when there's a cricket match between India and Pakistan, there is a conflict. But when there is art, there is handshakes. That is being missed in this whole controversy. Well, let's pause for a moment and hear from uh, our correspondent Kamal uh, Haider on the, uh, the Bollywood boycott uh, from Rawalpindi in Pakistan. After the recent tensions along the line of control in which India said it had carried a surgical strike and the Pakistanis obviously denied that, 
the Indian Motion Pictures Producers Association then decided to ban Pakistani artists from working in India and with immediate effect saying that they could not continue with their business until normal situation was restored. However, the Pakistani Association of Cinemas and Film Distributors decided to reciprocate by banning all Indian movies across Pakistani cinemas. However, people are saying that the ban is not enough because many Indian programs are aired on Pakistani television stations and thousands of CDs are available across the country. The important thing they say is to stop the Indian content. It is expected that until the relationship between these two countries normalize, the war of words is likely to filter down to lower levels. So, Maria Iqbal Tarana, if I come back to you then, um, it, it, it would appear that this uh, uh, ban by the cinemas in, in Pakistan is getting broad uh, support from ordinary Pakistanis, some of whom, uh, as we were hearing, want it to be further extended to television and so on. But what implications does, does that have uh, for the economy there as well, given that um, Bollywood and, and, and Indian actors are so popular there? Uh, of course, on the both sides, the state is also involved. Uh, Bollywood industry, of course, is, uh, has a, um, uh, a huge impact uh, uh, all over the world as well. Um, they have the biggest industry. And um, if we talk about Pakistani side, uh, Pakistani artists, yes, uh, they, um, uh, of course, uh, if, they, uh, if they, that was their choice to work in Bollywood, so of course it was um, not uh, enforced by a government or uh, um, that was, uh, they wanted to create this harmony bridge. Um, they were part of this confidence building mayor steps uh, if they, their choice was to work with the Bollywood. Um, uh, yes, uh, Pakistani government uh, took this um, step just uh, because uh, um, it was instigated by Indian government first telling uh, uh, Pakistani artists to leave the, their country. Uh, and everybody knows uh, they were on their, uh, their um, uh, on the work permit, which was issued by a Delhi government. So if uh, Delhi government has issued them a work permanent, so how can uh, you tell them to leave the country um, at uh, this point when um, 1.5 billion people are watching uh, these uh, relationship of Pakistan and India very closely? Um, what impact uh, that would be having on uh, the uh, next generation because uh, we have fought uh, three wars and um, uh, being a Kashmiri, what I think Pakistan and India must um, take this um, Kashmir issue um, uh, very seriously. They must come and uh, uh, look forward for an, a dialogue, not for the wars, because Kashmiri want their uh, right of self-determination. They must be focused on that. Right. They must invite each other because war is not a solution for anything. It's a dialogue which can uh, bring a harmony uh, and a peace in the South Asia, not in, uh, only right. in the South Asia, but all over the world. Um, yes. Made on Islam, how do you think that this, all of this fits into uh, politics in India at the moment and this broader shift to the right that we're seeing in, in Indian national politics? Yeah, you see, there has been a broader shift in the right, uh, on the right from 2014 Lok Sabha elections. And in the context of the you know, comes, you know, a re a election, assembly elections in some states in uh, early next year, uh, this is what is going to be one kind of an issue for the ruling BJP. Now, the important issue here, what we have to understand that, of course, the question of dialogue, diplomatic issue, you know, resolutions, those things are there. But what I'm deeply worried uh, as, as a student of politics, as a researcher of politics, is that, you know, this whole growing uh, normalization of an anti-immigrant politics that is going that is becoming a kind informing the political discourse of India. Now suppose today you are banning or boycotting Pakistani actors, right? Now tomorrow you might actually boycott Bengali actors in Bombay or maybe a Bihari actor from Bombay or a Punjabi actors from uh, in Bombay or a South Indian actor uh, actor in uh, in Bombay. Now and, and and this is not very good for the Mumbai film industry uh, at all, because, you know, talents are there. The second issue is that of 
a kind of a rational resolution of the situation than let's say escalating the thing. As the earlier uh, panelists were saying that you, you see this whole um, Bajrangi Bhaijan uh, was, was a major hit in both India and Pakistan. So that means why it is a major hit. Now it, it talks about India-Pakistan India relationship, India-Pakistan friendship, then let's say kind of going to a war. Because war is not a solution, uh, solution in this kind of a context. What we need is a kind of, you know, trade between two countries, friendship between two countries, relations between two countries, because this has been going on for se for se for 70 years. Now, it is high time to move on. All right. It's high time to move on. India is a mature democracy. India cannot just, uh, you know, uh, it can be guided by this kind of a very racist and a stereotyped kind of an image that, that you know, all Pakistanis are terrorists. Narayanan Madhavan, do you think it is? Do you think it is possible for? Uh, do you think it's possible yeah. to be patriotic without uh, this attitude towards uh, the arts industry and actors and politics? Yeah, I think it's very important to realize that the Pakistani actors in question are also not Islamists. Many of them are very uh, secular, liberal kind of people, and therefore banning them is uh, counterproductive. And uh, it's possible to be patriotic, in my opinion, uh, because we have seen that India fought a war with China in 1962 and then again with Pakistan in 65 uh, and then 71. And all through, the Indian Army was supported by Bollywood majorly, and but it was done in a way that was not in any way uh, hurting artists of any uh, kind. It was all about uh, saluting the soldiers who die for the countries and trying to help them. So it was being patriotic without having any civilian uh, repercussions on the side that affects normal relations. And uh, like I said before, artists do not associate themselves with any kind of jingoism historically. Even Hollywood is known for its liberal bias. So uh, it is ironic that you can't arm twist uh, artists into taking positions. But of course, uh, it's important to understand that uh, the national mood in India is a bit now uh, one of enragement following the attacks in Kashmir that uh, killed soldiers. And to some extent, that sentiment is understandable. But I think it's important to so take a long term I, view and a here? deeper can view. I, and that doesn't here? seem to be. Because what is a national mood? This, uh, this has to be questioned. What is a national mood? We don't know. Is there a referendum that 120 crore Indian citizens are arguing for a banning and a boycotting of the Pakistani actors? But what is an, we don't have a referendum on this. So I, I don't know what is a national mood actually. India is not one. It's not homogeneous. It has a very diff, this different kind of uh, context. You know, very different kinds of people live here. And, you know, it's a liberal society in that sense. So I don't know why we we are absolutely in favor of a dialogue. I mean, what, what's the national mood here? Is the national mood for war? I don't think so. Because there has been, there, there is no empirical yeah, right, evidence. To, let's, I think, let's, I think let's get not, not enough and, response to that briefly. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's a fair point that Dr. Uh, Islam is making, very statistically speaking. But if you hit the streets today and watch the TV channels in India and across, I know I, I, I don't say the media necessarily represents the all of the national mood, but there is a significant sense of outrage. So I only said it is understandable. I don't necessarily support the sense of outrage against artists, although I might support the outrage against terrorism. So there are nuances in the game, and I think it's very important for uh, the government to understand that you can't have trade going on across the border and just to target artists. And I think it's important to also have a dialogue uh, between artists themselves to really understand where things stand. And I see that happening next week, hopefully, right. because I think uh, there's a lot at stake and there are some analysts who in historically say that the press is the fourth test state of India, and the cricket is the fifth test state, and Bollywood is the sixth test state. So you can't leave the sixth test state unattended right. uh, in that a is, national sort of an issue. That is going to have to be the last word. Uh, I want to thank uh, all three of you uh, for uh, joining us. Uh, Maidul Islam, Maria Iqbal Tarana, and Nayaranan Madhavan. Thanks very much for being on Inside Story. And thank you for watching, as always. Remember, you can see the program again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Hazem Sika and the whole team here, bye for now.